lot to get to. We know that children, they're little miracles. <laughs> Feral, chaotic, wandering little miracles. They love to get lost, some of them, and keeping track of them is a universal challenge. Some parents now even using tracking devices, like, I don't know, air tags? Yeah, 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 yeah. to keep tabs on their children's location. And for peace of mind, of course, that they're safe and secure. So a lot of the debate, though, is now whether that is, in fact, good parenting or not good parenting. Uh, no. oh. It's tough. It's tough. out there have their children air tagged or like have a It's okay, you're safe place. Safe. Okay, a couple. Safe space. Okay, yeah, safe yeah. space. Safe. I'm not safe. judging at all. I don't have one for my son, but that's kind of out of laziness and also out of the fact that he's not really ever out of my sight, or he's not out of an adult's sight. Right. But there was this one day last year where I had to get to work really early and I dropped him off at a friend's house and they were gonna walk to school together. And as soon as I drove away, I went into a very dark place. <laughs> I was so yeah. worried. The whole way there, like, what if something happens? What if they go off course? What if someone tries to talk to them? Even though I've had all of those conversations before, you suddenly, it's a 24 hour news cycle that gets into your head and you're imagining the worst case scenarios. It got so bad, I called the school. I, <laughs> oh my God! Said what? You see, I, I never think about that. I know that feeling when like you get your mind walk. goes. I know. And I wasn't proud, and I don't know how we get over this at all. I don't. I, I but don't. But is it necessarily a bad thing? Like, I can't believe I'm saying that just because generally when it comes to parenting today, I'm the non-parent who's like, you guys are too soft on your kids. But our parents didn't have this option. But I'm wondering if they did what a, a beautiful thing it could be. My, my, I mean, my parents would be too cheap. I wouldn't, wouldn't want to be, that. they've come down in price, they've come yeah. down in price. Like I wouldn't want to be 18 and my parents doing it, but like at seven or eight, like I I I guess I the question know. is, I, I think the question is, why are we so scared of the world? I think this is what you were alluding to. And um, that's a, it's a legit question. Yeah. Because we've been told time and time again what we think of the world as a dangerous, scary place, especially for kids, actually doesn't hold up in statistics. So there's a gap between what we think is happening in the world and what is actually happening, and then our parenting is parenting to the lowest common denominator. Right. Yeah. I understand why. We don't Just ever want to like have our kids kidnapped. We were the generation of how many faces do you see on the side of the milk carton? To this day, I don't park next to a white van with no windows. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Right? I, to this day, I don't do that. Even though less than 1%, less than 1% of children who are abducted are done so by a stranger, but 90% of children who are abducted are done so by a parent. Oh, oh, yeah. Here's another statistic for you. Of the majority of cases of kids who are described as missing, 90% of them are runaways. Mm. They are running away. And of that subset, oh. it's mostly the 12 to 18 year olds. Yeah. So I start to sit there and go, there's a gap between how I'm parenting, because I haven't aired, I sh why am I saying this on national television? <laughs> Okay, fine, I have an air tag in my daughter's knapsack. <laughs> and they have seen me when she's on a trip at camp, they go on trips, where is she right now? Boop. And I'll tell you, it gives me a hit. I'm like, yep. okay, good, the child's alive, I think. Yeah. <laughs> and good. But you see that gap? Mm -hmm. Now I come from the news world, and so we unfortunately, we fear monger, we, everything is the most catastrophic scenario that you can imagine. So as I've said time and time again, I'm reading a book that is completely changing my paradigm in parenting, which is How to Raise an Adult. And of course, no surprise, the author says, cut the umbilical cord. And her line, I'm gonna leave it at this because I could get very preachy about this, is we need to prepare our children to thrive in this world independently and stop teaching them to be afraid of this world. Yeah. So I'm trying, and I'm gonna try to get rid of the air tag. Will you though? It takes, in this world, to change that thinking. Yeah. It, for us parents, it's gonna take great courage yeah. to raise our kids in the world that it actually is, not the world that we think it is. I so I'm gonna try to do better. I, I hope so. I think it takes courage and I think it takes support from other parents because I have a story to tell about these two parents. Oh no. <laughs> Last fall, the four of us, we went out of the city to do a shoot at this cornfield. And there were like drone cameras that were set up to shoot the social logo being, and that's us, right? Yeah, yeah. So you can see the corn grows really high it was a weekend, and Melissa and, and Cynthia had brought their kids, Jaya and Marquesa. 
And so we get to the shoot and we're ready to roll. We are professionals. They're like, no problem, our kids will come. They're like, you know, old enough. And every three minutes, these two, are, where are the kids? We gotta go look for the kids. They could get where lost are in the corner. They could what just what if they get lost in the corner? We had a drone yeah. that they could find. Yeah. The where are the kids? Where are they? We gotta go. We gotta. Go. Where are they? Can we just go over there? Sorry, guys. We just have to go check. I know we were and, so annoying. It's and we real. delayed it's the shoot by a very long time. And I'm, in the back of my mind, I was like concerned for them. They were making me panic for Marquez and Jai. I was like, oh my god, like children of the corn. Man, <laughs> horror story. What's gonna happen to Jai and Marquez? So I, we were all very supportive and we fed into this. Yeah, yeah. we did we feed into, into it. it. Like, we're like, we normalized it for you. Like, and me in our heads. We're gonna be okay. We're gonna go <laughs> like, look for them, okay? Don't worry. Everyone, if it had gonna, been your dog whatever. there, you would have been the yeah. exact same for way. For sure. <laughs> for sure. God. I air tag my dog. <gasps> <laughs> I air tag my dog. Wow. But what you're saying is about teaching resilience. So we enabled this. I'm on my way home though, and I'm like, oh, I hope the kids are okay, thank God. We got through the shoot without them being lost. And then I said to myself, wait a second, Melissa grew up on a farm. Yeah. I know. <laughs> the irony. And this is like a family farm. You know, there are kids running around everywhere. They sold pies and donuts. It was incredible. Yeah. And we found the kids. And we found the kids. Innocently, like, playing Talking with to a lamb or something. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. anyway. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so yes, we all support, we have to support each other. It's a parenting oh. paradigm <laughs> shift and we're going to be leading it here Get on the, the social, okay? okay? Hey there, what did you think? Drop your comments below and join the conversation. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you can find more on everything from food and fashion to pop culture and current events. See you soon.